So Apple has just finished announcing all of their latest features for not just the Apple Watch, but also all of their other devices as well. Here at WWDC, more affectionately known as DubDub, which is where they share all of the new features coming to not just the development side, but all of their devices across the board. Now these features are outlined here at this event and then go through a public beta period over the course of the summer before finally being pushed to production, typically in September when they announce new hardware. Now roughly half of the features that will be announced by September are announced here at WWDC, and then the other half they keep secret until September so they have more things to pitch you and sell you on then. But there are a number of new fitness features and watch features in general that I'm gonna dive into here that are definitely appealing to basically everyone. We're gonna start off with the not fitness features then get into the fitness features. The very first thing to know is that Apple has renamed all of their operating systems after the year, but not this year, the year coming up, kind of like cars do. So in this case, it is watchOS 26 after 2026 next year. Well, one could certainly quibble about whether or not it should be called 2025 or 2026. I think all of us agree the year system is better, especially as you had all different versions of iOS and watchOS and macOS, and etc. Uh, now you have one thing named after a year. And then also likewise on the device side, you used to have you know watchOS 11 announcing with watch series 10, which was just all sorts of confusing. Now, the big feature of all these new platforms is their so-called liquid design. It's basically like this glassy look to it. Uh, and it's most prominent on the iPhone, but you're also seeing it on watchOS as well, where some of the texturing and stuff looks like it's liquefied essentially, and things are a bit more translucent. Still, the overall structure of watchOS is relatively similar to what you've seen in the past. But there are still a number of nice handy features before we talk about the fitness things. Uh, number one is automatic volume adjustment based on the ambient noise around you. So if you're in like a, a louder environment, a bunch of kids screaming, whatever, uh, it'll go ahead and increase the volume on the watch uh, to compensate on that for the notifications. And hey, a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting and useful, just simply watch it all the way through. That is the only thing the YouTube gods care about these days, and it really helps with this video and the channel quite a bit. Next, there's now wrist flick gestures. So you can simply flick your wrist to go ahead and dismiss a call and do all sorts of other actions. In fact, speaking of calls, there's a bunch of call features that came from iOS around call screening and hold, and all those are here as well. So call screening means it goes ahead and screens the telemarketer call, uh, and then the telemarketer has to basically say what their intentions are. And then from there, it'll actually ring your phone. So it will not ring your phone until that screening occurs. That is also occurring on Apple Watch as well. Uh, likewise, there's also the new call hold feature. So that means if you're on hold, like you've called an airline, you have to wait 30 minutes and you have on hold music, the phone and now the watch will go ahead and detect the fact that you're on hold and on hold music. And you can go ahead and just ignore everything altogether, put the phone down, whatever you want. And then once the human comes back, it'll notify you and say, hey, there's a human here. Now you can continue the conversation with the actual human. He's making the bike looks all pretty. I appreciate that. I like a nice clean bike stable, even though my bike stable's usually kind of a mess. Uh, this is looking nice back there now. Next, they've added live translations to the Messages app, again, on the watch, something they've also added on iOS as well. So the idea being that as messages come in, they're automatically translated from language A to language B, and then vice versa, when you send your message, they're automatically translated back for the other person into the correct language. Also in Messages, they've added smart actions. So if someone is asking you for your location, it'll offer down the bottom the ability to share your location. Next, a biggie, they've added notes to watchOS. Uh, up until now, you may not have realized this, the notes app wasn't on at your watch. I use notes religiously for everything, like everything under the sun I put in a notes app, even like a grocery store list and really complex scripts like this thing right here um, are all in the notes app. It is super nice to now have that on the watch just to simply quickly grab something if I need details. You can also add to notes as well from the watch too. Now last year, Apple updated the smart stack on the watch to make it more predictive and smarter and all that kind of stuff. And they're doubling down on that this year again as well. Uh, an example they gave was if your routine normally goes to the gym and at the gym you normally open the workout app and the workout app, you normally open up the functional fitness or basically the strength training uh, sport profile within that. Now it'll do that automatically for you when you walk into the gym. Uh, likewise, if you go out of cellular range or connectivity range where you might want backtrack, that's the compass to get back when you get lost, uh, it'll suggest that in the watch right there and say, hey, you should go ahead and use this right now. Basically the idea being it's gonna bubble these things up to the front. In fact, that's a pretty good segue to now dive into all of the fitness features, including the very first Apple intelligence feature to be seen on the watch. Up until now, it's been just all like normal stuff. Now we have actual Apple intelligence with the new fitness buddy feature. The way you get to fitness buddy, we'll get to that in just a second. First off, there's the revamped workout app itself. The workout app is the main app that when you go and do a workout, you start with. So you'll see now when you choose a sport profile, it's totally revamped and there's different corners of the screen there. In the lower left-hand corner is the music option. Uh, 
And when you tap into that, there's the option to have it automatically decide and determine a playlist for you, or you can simply go ahead and manually specify a playlist as well. Meanwhile, back on that workout page in the upper right-hand corner, you have all of your structure workouts, your pacer, all the kind of fun stuff is up on the right-hand side. They're just making that easier to access than it would have been in the past. Up until now, if I wanted to access those things, I would have had to gone into and added different menus. Now they're all like in one easily accessible place. Kind of pretty similar, to be honest, most other watches where you have all of your settings up front on one panel. Uh, Apple's essentially doing the same thing here as well. Okay, so let's then dive into the workout buddy piece. Basically the core new feature that's dependent on AI here and the first Apple Watch feature to leverage AI in some capacity. So in the lower right hand corner of the start screen, that icon opens up the workout buddy panel. Uh, and within that, you basically have kind of two core options. One, do you want it turned on or off for that sport type? So you can turn it on or off for sport type in case you don't want to hear it at all. Maybe you want it on running, but don't want it on strength training or et cetera. And at the bottom, then there's two options for voices, voice one or voice two. One voice being a female voice modeled after Sam Sanchez. Uh, the second one it being a male voice modeled after Jamie Ray. Both of them being Apple Fitness Plus trainers. Uh, now again, I say model because it is generative uh, voice creation. So it's gonna sound exactly like them, but it will not be them speaking. Uh, it's all done on the fly on your watch itself. So heading back into the workout, we start the workout. And the way the workout buddy works is divided into three core chunks. Uh, the first piece there is the pep talk. Uh, so that's gonna happen just after you press start. Uh, a couple seconds later, the music might start and then boom, uh, the voice will come in. Great job starting your run. This is your second run this week. You're crushing it, closing that move ring for six straight days. Let's keep building on that with your run today. You'll buy some house vibes from Muramasa. And it's going to give you context and insights uh, that may be useful as you start that workout. So it's going to tell you, hey, you're on the cusp of another streak. Uh, here's your training load recently. It's going to give you all sorts of stuff uh, as a bit of a update, if you will, as you begin that workout. And that's going to pull from all of your fitness data in the past, as well as any other data in that realm. Then we get into the next piece there, uh, which is divided into two different chunks. First is alerts, and then there's milestones. Uh, alerts are the same alerts that you would have had in the past that you can toggle on. Uh, so things like you know pace and distance and power and cadence and all that kind of stuff that is still there except now when you get an alert you're going to get it one in that generative uh, voice of the two trainers that i mentioned but two you might also get context with that four miles down your last mile was your fastest yet coming in at eight minutes and 56 seconds your average heart rate for that split was 157 beats per minute. And you won't get context every single time, uh, but you might get, hey, here's your pace. And by the way, that was your lowest heart rate of the last, I don't know, 15K or 15 miles or whatever it may be. But again, it won't always give you context for every single split uh, or every single time it needs that, only just every once in a while. The next piece is milestones. Uh, in like context, it won't always give you milestones either. So milestones could be, hey, this is your longest run, the longest point you've ever run. It's gonna tell you that right then and there. Uh, or hey, you've just gone through 2,000 feet of elevation, uh, whatever the case may be. You just crushed your 100th mile for running workouts this year. Keep up the great work. Now, if you're running a lot, and using running as an example here, and you're running 50 mile weeks every week or 70 mile weeks, you're gonna have less milestones. That's just a reality of that situation than someone who's only run maybe one 5K a week or one 5K a month, or whatever the case is, they're gonna go through more milestones. And now all those insights are indeed generative just like the voices themselves. Uh, so Apple's created a model and put guardrails around the model, so it's not gonna tell you that, hey, that was the, that was the slowest lap ever, or that was the worst you've ever run, et cetera. It's going to be generally speaking, motivationally positive, at least that's the hope. Uh, looking forward to seeing the interesting creative things over the next few months in the beta. But ultimately, those are all generatively developed uh, insights based on the models they've designed uh, to go ahead and give uh, fitness focused insights. What's also notable though about this whole middle section here is it's not going to take into account any of the structured workouts that you may have loaded or any things like the pacer or anything like that. That's completely ignored here. It seems like an opportunity for the future. It probably is an opportunity for the future. Uh, but for right now, it's more about the alerts you've set up and the milestones and, and that's it. Then once you hit stop in your workout and save the workout, where you see that summary screen today, that summary screen's still there, you're gonna get what's called the walk-off. So like five seconds later, give or take, it'll give you a bit of a summary stat, a uh, list of summary stats for that particular workout. Fantastic run. You averaged a pace of nine minutes and seven seconds per mile across 6.3 miles, and your average heart rate was 153 beats per minute. Plus, you earned your first 10K run award, and that's something to really be proud of. 
Have a wonderful day. At this point, that's where the workout buddy ends. The workout buddy is from the moment you hit start to the moment you hit finish and a couple seconds after that, and then it ends. None of those workout buddy uh, details, stats, insights, etc., get shown on your phone, in the fitness app, or anywhere else. And that does seem like a pretty big opportunity uh, to have that kind of crossover. And that brings up a pretty interesting point about Apple's workout buddy and where they've targeted. If you look at all of their competitors today, they've targeted from before you start the workout, insights about what you should do and all that kind of fun stuff, and then after the workout, insights about how you should recover and you know training low and all that bits there, Apple's ignored that. They've said, you know what, we're gonna focus on the actual workout itself, which actually none of their competitors give you those insights mid-workout. Aside from like, are you recovered in the first couple minutes as some of the watches do, but beyond that, it's basically you do your run and that's, that's it. Still, in my mind, that leaves a lot of opportunity for the fall. As I mentioned earlier on, Apple typically uh, splits up all the new features you hear about on watchOS into two camps. The stuff they announced at WWC in June June, and then all the other features they announced in September with their new watches. And even features that are announced in September, new watchOS features, typically go to everything in that particular watchOS version. So last year with the Tides app or the Vitals app or whatever the case may be, they went to all watches, not just the new watches that were announced. Thus, I think it'll be interesting to look forward to the fall and say, what else is Apple doing uh, from an AI standpoint on this watch? Because as of today, it's really just this workout buddy feature that leverages AI. And within that, those two ways, the general voice uh, and then the insights themselves. Anyways, definitely hit subscribe to stay tuned as I dive into this in the beta period uh, and dig into how it really works in real life. And of course, over the next few weeks, there is a ton of other sports tech coming. So definitely hit subscribe at the bottom for that as well. With that, have a good one.